The most recent events have made the relations between the U.S. and Russia go to the limit of tension. It was announced that Russia intends to send a nuclear weapon into space. This act, if confirmed, will be an unambiguous violation of the non-militarization clause of space and may lead to catastrophic consequences. It has prompted the U.S. authorities to take drastic steps, such as emergency meetings, as a way of addressing the threat. Mike Turner, the head of the House Intelligence Committee, who represented the concerns of the committee, has emphasized this possibility in particular. Despite some Russian officials' claims that the weapon is still at its developmental stage and not an urgent threat, it has already caused a lot of worries, because the idea of a nuclear weapon in space has been already discussed. This device is said to be an EMP system that can emit electromagnetic energy in the form of an electromagnetic pulse, which may disrupt satellites and other devices in space. This technology could be a threat to communication systems such as satellites, GPS and other services that are operated through satellites, and the aftermath could be devastating. There is no doubt that the U.S. military and especially their soldiers would be in great danger if such a weapon is brought into play. The military employs satellites for communication, monitoring and navigation and their loss will make it very hard to continue the operations without them. Moreover, there could be a variety of other consequences for the global security regime if a nuclear missile were to be deployed in space. If a conflict breaks out, critical satellite systems like early warning, navigation, communication and weapon guidance systems could be destroyed, including satellites such as SpaceX's Starlink satellites, which Ukraine has used in its conflict with Russia. Besides the fact that their destruction would be an impediment to the functioning of these critical capabilities, it would also create a hazardous debris that is traveling at hypersonic speeds. The garbage could be a great danger for any spacecraft. As an illustration, in 2021 when Russia destroyed a satellite, it created 1,783 pieces of debris which were all capable of damaging or destroying spacecraft. However, there are international agreements like the 1967 Outer Space Treaty that forbid the deployment of such weapons in space, but Russia is withdrawing from some post-Cold War treaties, which gives rise to a worry about its plans in space. If Russia decides to dismiss the Outer Space Treaty, it will be able to do so unhindered by legal restrictions and increase its military presence in space. The United States may also reciprocate in the same manner, which will lead to the escalation of the tensions, and in the worst-case scenario, the space-focused Cold War may be rekindled. In addition to the EMP weapon, which is the most likely one, Russia is said to be developing other space-based weapons. A new laser system, which has been constructed recently and is quite advanced, has been spotted on satellite images at a Russian space facility. This system could be used to blind satellites, and therefore, it is even more difficult to resolve the problem of congestion in space. Extensive open-source investigations have shown the development of a space weapon, which is likely to alter the rules of space warfare. This is a weapon named Project Kina, which is an optical laser system, the purpose of which is to engage in the electro-optical warfare, and it is capable of permanently blinding enemy satellites. Different from the blinding dazzlers that only temporarily blind optical systems, Kina's laser pulses are so focused that they can cause permanent damage to the sensors. This fact was revealed through the analysis of a large mass of public satellite imagery, RFQs from Russian industrial contractors and Russian financial documents. The finance document, obtained by the Space Review, is about Kina as a next-generation laser system with a special tracking system which uses adaptive optics. This system improves Kina's capability to mitigate the disruptive effects of the atmosphere. Thus, guaranteeing accurate and precision targeting of adversarial satellites. Kina's ability to track is enhanced further by its advanced features. It consists of a transmit-receive system that reflects the laser light back from its target. These figures give Kina the opportunity to shift its aim, which means that the laser beams will be precisely aimed to the optical systems of enemy satellites, which will result in their blindness. This innovation is a major step forward in anti-satellite weaponry since it targets the most likely points of failure. Kina is created to be used with the Paraset Mobile Laser Dazzler that has been functioning since the end of 2019. As a whole, these systems are the powerful counter-satellite arsenal for Russia. Besides that, 
Russia has launched three satellites for military operations in outer space. The first of these spacecrafts, named Kamikaze, was launched in 2014. Although it did not have any projectiles, this craft's incredible agility at high velocities was like that of a space fighter. In 2017, Russia has launched a satellite with another satellite on board, capable of shooting down the enemy. This has increased its offensive capabilities. The latest launch in 2019, called the Nesting Doll, has integrated the propulsion features and projectile launching capabilities of its precursors, making it a formidable adversary in space wars. The deployment of these advanced anti-satellite weapons by Russia is a threat which is not only to the security of the United States, but also to other countries bound by the 1967 Outer Space Treaty. This treaty is for prohibition of weapons of mass destruction deployment in space, but the development of these highly sophisticated anti-satellite systems evokes questions about the treaty's spirit. As space is becoming more militarized, the need to keep it safe for cooperation and the prevention of space weaponization is becoming more urgent. FOBs, the missile system developed by China, is the nuclear-capable missile that differs from the ICBMs in a way that it operates in the fractional orbit. FOBs shoot into low Earth orbit before deorbiting at the target time to hit any place on Earth, which is more effective than ICBMs in terms of range and speed. This system was tested first by China in 2021, and the surprise to the U.S. intelligence agencies was that it was not them who were the first to deploy it. Once in place, the FOBs maintains its low orbit around the Earth until it is ready to do its job. It does so at a hypersonic speed, and even the Mach 27, which is the highest speed reached, is difficult to defend against. This high speed and agility makes it possible for the U.S. and its allies to react only within a few minutes from the moment it is seen. China's pursuit of FOBs is connected with a larger strategy to offset U.S. military supremacy in space. To illustrate, China has shown an interest in countering SpaceX's Starlink satellites that are seen as a strategic resource for the U.S. military, giving them the ability to communicate and provide high-resolution imagery in a stable manner anywhere in the world. In order to deal with these newly emerging challenges, the U.S. military is augmenting its presence of satellites in space. This expansion is intended to detect and react to speedy moving threats in a blink of an eye, and even those moving at extremely high speed. Through the launch of a larger number of satellites, the U.S. wants to secure its position in space and to protect its assets from possible assaults. SDA of the U.S. has made two contracts worth $1.3 billion to deploy 28 small satellites in the next three years. These satellites are the backbone of the National Defense Space Architecture of the Future that was designed to increase missile warning and tracking functions. The architecture consists of a few significant parts, and the transport and tracking layers are the key ones. The transport layer is built on the basis of the military data and connectivity that is resilient, low latency, and operates globally across the warfighter platforms. These satellites create the second layer, with an orbital range of 300 kilometers to 500 kilometers. Once the deployment is finished, there will be at least two satellites visible in 95% of the Earth, and at least one satellite in the 99% of the planet visible at all times. Therefore, the tracking layer will give the global cues, warnings, tracking, and aiming of advanced missile threats that also include the hypersonic missile systems. It will be based on the use of space-based sensing, advanced algorithms, data fusion, and tactical data products that are available on demand. The SDA has given the contract to L3 Harris Technologies to build 14 satellites and $617 million to Northrop Grumman Strategic Space Systems for another 14 satellites. These satellites are called Tranche 1 satellites and they will form the first layer of the tracking network. They will be launched from SDA's operations and integration centers as well as the U.S. Army's Redstone Arsenal in Alabama. Despite their small size, each satellite will be sent into a polar orbit. Thus, they will cover different aspects of the planet from the north to the south. Consequently, it will be possible to monitor the Earth continuously and from different angles. This will necessitate the launch of four individual missions, each having seven satellites. The first launch is planned for April 2025 and is expected to bring about the need for Russia and China to shoot down the number of satellites they would need to destroy to interrupt U.S. operations in space. 
the competition for the world leadership of the three major powers, Russia, China, and the United States, has taken a darker turn, and space can become a new arena of the conflict. The fact that this escalation is taking place highlights the need for international collaboration to prevent weaponization of space and to make sure that it is used for peaceful purposes. What are your thoughts on it? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and watch the next video as well. See you again.